I got a, I got a question. So say the person watching this right now, they're at their so-called rock bottom. They're hopeless. They have no way. Well, there is a way, but they, they feel stuck. There's like, for me, it was like hard to implement discipline and consistency because it was just like, everything was foggy. And what do you say to them? Like they're, they it's like, how do they, how do I get out of this? What do I need to do? Like, help me, tell me, give me an action point. Yeah. Uh, I always believe in, in one day at a time. Um, try one day at a time. And, and if you fail, try again, because failure is not final until you stop trying. And so uh, I, I'm just a big proponent. A lot of people will come in when I was in fitness, they'd come in and they're like, I want to lose 90 pounds. And it's like, okay, I love your goal. You know, the way that we're going to get there is one day at a time. Um, people want, they want these instant results. And again, it's just showing up day. And one of my favorite books is called uh, The Slide Edge by Jeff Olson. And it's just a book that talks about uh, habits, the power of habits, and, and doing things day in and day out. If I work out once, I'm not going to have a six-pack or be super strong, right? But if I don't work out, not like I'm going to die and fall over. It's doing that habit consistently for an extended period of time. Same thing with like eating a salad. Eating a salad, I'm not going to just see my six-pack. If I don't eat a salad or eat like a burger, I'm not going to immediately get fat. It's repeating that habit consistently. And so for me, I focus on today, like this current moment. How can I optimize and be the best version of myself? I know to be the best version of myself, I should probably move today. Whether that's weightlifting, running, exercise, a sport, I should do something. So let me do that. Uh, I'm, I'm better when I read. So let me, let me spend a little bit of time, 5, 10, 15 minutes of reading, self-improvement. Um, let me make sure I get some good food and fuel my body. So for today, let me implement these things that push me closer towards my goal. And if I don't, like, let's say I don't do one of these things, it's not the end of the world. I have tomorrow to try again. And that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be. And I think we, we talk about working out and for me, that was step one mm -hmm. was getting back in the gym. And it's like, I didn't have the brain capacity because there was so much fear and worry to do everything all i could do was work out mm -hmm. and the thing was it was like it was like a spiritual experience of saying like god this is all i got but like i'm gonna get in the gym today and i'm gonna give you this today and it might not look like it looked like when i played college football but it might be 15 minutes and it might be a few push-ups and a few pull-ups and a jog mm -hmm. but that that physical movement like you're talking about can bring you closer to god i like oh, yeah. and i think that's one thing that we forget i think that's a, a missing piece in christian society is like how important it is to to do to work out and to and to get after it because that was the thing that that sealed and began this moment of growing closer with god i was a uh, i was like two weeks in to rehab it was july 4th of last year and man i was just like it was a pity party and yeah. i was playing victim and we got the day off usually we were in um group therapy and stuff like that but at that time a new show the terminal list came out with chris pratt mm -hmm. it's on amazon prime it's it's, it's it. an amazing show it. yeah and so we had a media room there and so i like lock myself in the media room and i start watching it it's 10 episodes, 10 hours. I was in there for 10 hours. But halfway. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever go to the bathroom or eat or anything? No, like that? I just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm still like withdrawing, man. I'm I got like restless leg syndrome and like, I'm, I'm just pissed. Yeah. And like halfway through, I'm just thinking, and it's like these Navy SEALs are six months on, six months off. I'm like, these guys like are so tough. And I'm over here two weeks. I got to be in here 90 days. Like, why am I acting like this? Mm. So I walk out after the 10th episode <laughs> and everyone's like, where have you been? And I've been like watching TV. Like, <laughs> but the, the spiritual director was there. He's a Christian guy, but in rehab, you just, you know, you call it the spiritual director because there's a ton of different beliefs in there. But he comes up to me. He doesn't know what I've been doing. And he looks at me and he goes, God wants me to tell you um, that you're in this time right now 
in training to become a Navy SEAL for him. Wow. And in that moment, I was like, okay, I got to start working out. Like that was the one thing that I start that I thought I have to work out. It's the next step. That's the next step for me. I have to work out. And so the next day, every single day since then, or not every single day, but like literally every day in rehab, I went and I grinded and I got the guys in there with me. Like, let's grind, let's sweat. Like, let's release these endorphins. We've been fueling our minds with like these drugs and everything. Like, let's, let's get back to like who we, who we really are. And like that thing that he said to me was pivotal, but it had nothing to do with, Hey, here's this verse. Yeah. It was, God wants you to be a Navy SEAL. It's time to get in the gym. Man up. Yes. That changed my life. That's what I needed. And then everything else followed. So yeah, what's amazing about this is, is I saw JB a couple months after rehab and I knew JB pre rehab, right? And what's amazing is God starts working something here before you see it here. He starts working something emotional and spiritual before you see it here. So when people see you, they can see the countenance of Christ because of the time you spend every day working here, right? In your heart. And so uh, I saw JB after that. I'm like, dude, you look different. And he's like, man, I went to rehab and I got back in shape and I got back physically, spiritually, emotionally. I got connected with where the Lord wanted me. And I was like, I want to be around you now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, <laughs> yeah. this, there's this attraction that's like, I want to be, you know, Proverbs uh, 27, 17, right? As iron sharpens iron, so is one man to another. And like, I want to be around guys like that that make you better. You know, that, that quote says, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future. I want to be around guys like that. I want to be, I want to be challenged. And we were talking about this earlier. I always want to be connected. I want to be holding on to somebody who's, 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 who's at where I want to be. And I want to be bringing people up where they want to be where I'm at now. I'm going to connect it in this chain, right? And uh, I just, I don't know, it's, uh, I get super excited about being around men that challenge me because I know that there's more. I know I can be better. I know that there's another stage that, that I get to, another level, right? Level 17, level 18, whatever it is.